Some of you may know that there are underground spaces all over planet Earth. But what do you believe that in 1965, two Czech miners accidentally fell into a forgotten underground complex? The event was carefully swept under the rug by the KGB, so the truth is not known to the public until many years later. Because the story took place in the coal mines of Ostrava, Czech Republic. It was also published on the Czech server Alaska.org. Then the following letter was sent to the editor. Hello Alu, I would like to share with you, and if you will allow it, with other readers. A perhaps interesting but in any case dramatic interview with a long-time friend and friend of mine. Which I have converted into written form to preserve it and make it accessible to as wide a public as possible. There are still many doubters in the world. Even people who outright mock the reality of the hollow world, and I hope that Jara's story might open the eyes of some of them. I myself have known Jara for many years. And I can say for myself that although he has endured much, he has never once in his life he had to bend over backwards, and has always been the straightest and most pure character. Thank you for your beautiful and kind actions in this chaotic world and I wish you much inner happiness. Milcher This story happened one January day in 1965. It was such a normal day. I went to work as usual. I also had an snack ready. We were busy and had no idea what to do next few hours would bring. Our task was to resume coal cutting in the Hubert shaft. And that alone was unpleasant enough. This is how the 80-year-old miner Yaroslav Svark from Ostrava begins his recollection of the day that changed his entire life. Nothing on that peaceful morning indicated that he would meet not only a possible remnant of an ancient, technologically advanced civilization, but also the interest of the then KGB. We dug and cleared in roughly one kilometer, and it was hellishly hot. I remember that my friend Josen was all wet with sweat and I made fun of him. Even today, the memory brings me to tears. After about two hours it happened. First we heard a hollow sound under the instruments. We didn't pay attention to that. We dug into the rock a few more times. When the ground beneath us caved in and we fell under the ground, that's what I thought at the time. We landed pretty hard. I was afraid to move and I was checking to see if I had broken anything. We broke through from a height of about 4 meters, and when the dust settled and we somehow recovered, the first shock came. Instead of complete darkness around us, there was a bluish light. It didn't come out of nowhere, it was just there. The second surprise was a kind of strange smell. Kind of like being near electric pylons in the rain, ionized air maybe. Another. Much bigger shock came when we looked around. I was expecting a minimal space of some kind of cavity where we can barely move, but definitely not this. It wasn't some two meter seam. It was a completely regular landscape, black and gray, bathed in pale blue light. There were charred trees on the ground, all fallen in one direction all uprooted by a huge force sometime perhaps millions of years ago, but preserved, as if mummified. Mr. Yaroslav was an ordinary miner who had never heard anything about the theory of the hollow earth, never even read about Tunguska, any paranormal phenomena were foreign to him. But now, together with his friend, he faced a completely new reality. So far, they were both dismayed by this natural phenomenon, but was it really all just directed by the forces of nature? Yaroslav's memories continue. I could see perfectly and in the distance behind the uprooted trees there was a pillar. 
We thought it must be some sort of chimney or ventilation shaft and decided to walk towards it. Somehow we thought that it must be related to the shaft and that we should just go there and then see. We made our way around fallen, huge logs, perhaps a hundred meters long. We kept falling and surprisingly the temperature didn't rise. Even Josen wasn't sweating anymore and basically we didn't even notice the temperature. We had coal under our feet all the time and we were getting closer to that pillar. His heel was behind a slight mound and the top was lost in that blue light. Where we somehow automatically assumed the ceiling, but it was not in sight. We walked for less than an hour, it was far. I estimate something like three kilometers today. There was no end in sight anywhere. Nothing to indicate we're in a cavity. Just behind us was the rock from which we fell. The longer we walked and talked about the whole thing, the more absurd it seemed to us. We even thought we were hallucinating because we inhaled carbon monoxide and that we would die soon. Apparently, we were not threatened by anything like that. And we went on in confusion, towards the chimney. It had to be a chimney because it was square, which we were already beginning to recognize. It was also shiny. And he was starting to kind of worry us. We were just kind of nervous about it. We were already close enough to see how a small chimney, about one and a half meters long, belonged to each edge of the chimney, a perfect octahedron, with a diameter of about 40 to 50 centimeters. The chimney was also octagonal. Now we were standing right next to him and felt the unsettling feeling that his proximity caused. It was like it was pulling us in. We were touching its perfect walls and it felt like it had no temperature, despite what we expected to be cold metal. Then it came. Suddenly I received an order. An internal order. Go to the top post and touch one particular wall. I had to obey I felt I had to obey. So I touched one wall of the first pillar. Then I was literally drawn internally to the other and touched another particular wall followed by another and again to touch only one particular wall, just once and continue to the next. In this way I went round the whole main pillar, touching the various walls of the pillars, making a cipher which I did not understand, I was driven by a power far superior to me. I felt like Moses receiving the ten, this flashed through my mind at one point, between sixth and seventh column. I was at the last one, I didn't even think, I didn't need to think, I just was. I just felt that I existed and that I was no longer limited by thinking. That I knew with absolute certainty that I had to touch the fifth wall of the last post, that beyond that touch was waiting for me the next stage on the journey of being human. And then it happened. I was no longer me. I had become an eight-sided pillar. A pillar supporting the entire universe. A connector of worlds. Today they would say on TV that it was like a wormhole or something. I was out of space and time. I don't know how long. One breath. An hour. All life. Or 13.8 billion years. So that's almost the end of the wonderful story of the wonderful Mr. Yaroslav. Unfortunately, the very end is far more prosaic. Mr. Yaroslav came to normal consciousness on a stretcher when he was already in the daylight of this world. To his surprise, however, he was not headed for the ambulance. But for two parked black seagulls, cars of the KGB at the time, where, in complete silence, 
they dragged him in and took him for an medical examination and interrogation. He answered the same questions over and over again for long hours. But he was patient because he knew what these men were. He knew that although they thought they were working for Moscow, they were actually being directed by someone else. He knew that in four years they would help with the arrival of tanks in the Czech Republic. He knew that in 20 years they would help a kind of association called the Civic Forum, Czech political party after the coup. He knew they would always be here. He never saw his friend Josen again. He officially died in a collapse in the Hubert shaft. He didn't even have an official funeral. Of course. Yaroslav was forbidden to talk about the whole thing, under the threat of complete annihilation of his entire family. Today, when Yaroslav is practically alone and feels similar transformative tension in the air, as he did at the Column of the Worlds, he feels obliged to inform the widest possible public about all this. It's time for a change. And as we feel it, so do they, and that's why they increase the pressure. That is why horrors are happening in the world, from which only a complete transformation into another dimensions can lead us, as it helped me to see a clear and concrete future. And to receive other higher gifts and initiations. I wish every person had his pillar of the worlds, concludes Yaroslav Svark. So many testimonies about the underground spaces under Ostrava. The article was published in 2016, and Mr. Yaroslav is very likely no longer with us. As Mr. Yaroslav's testimony, the situation plan from the place of the sinkhole also remained. Was it a device left behind by an advanced civilization? Or is the interior of the globe still inhabited by beings on a far higher spiritual level than we are? Who knows? But it is certain that there was a civilization similar to ours. Whether she was at a higher spiritual level, we cannot say for sure in the event that she was wiped out by a nuclear disaster. Ostrava was supposed to be mined until 2050. Millions of tons of coal remained under the city. In the 1960s, the liquidation of mines in Ostrava began and continued in the 1990s. The same fate awaited, for example, the Petter Bezrup mine, which was owned by the Rothschild family. It was to be mined here until 2017. In 1989, a revolution took place in the Czech Republic and politicians decided to end the mining of black coal in Ostrava. However, this decision was not the first. The closure of the mines was considered as early as the late 1960s. Below Ostrava there is a large fence, a marked area where mining was not allowed to keep the city from sinking. Regarding the fate of the Hubert shaft, on July 1, 1966, coal mining was stopped there and it was used only as an auxiliary shaft. The miners were transferred to work in another shaft. That is, the following year after Mr. Yaroslav's event. His friend Josen was probably, silenced, forever. In 1992, the pits of the former Hubert mine were filled in and made inaccessible with reinforced concrete. 
No further mining is allowed here, despite the growing energy crisis. Mr. Yaroslav mentioned a bluish light that came from nowhere. Romania's Busegi Mountains are said to have a vast space beneath it, like the intersection of three tunnels. Each of them goes to a different part of our planet. There is said to be a light that comes from nowhere, but it is green in color. Part of the territory is under military administration. Busegi is very mysterious and all information regarding the discoveries inside the mountain range is subject to the highest level of secrecy and must not be presented in any way. Not even in the sense of assumptions or hypotheses. This anonymous warning was received by a Czech writer and columnist after he published a lecture about Busegi on his website.